that's a grandson. Yeah. That's so good. Uh, with my car, like every year we, we, they get dressed up and they wear like a little outfit either for uh, Easter or Cinco de Mayo or something. And my, uh, my old, my older grandson, he was getting pissed because the other one was complaining. <laughs> And it was, it was at, right there was at the breaking point where he was just like, I don't want to do pictures no more. And I'm fast, too. Like, I don't I don't sit there and Mickey Mouse around. I, I do yeah. it quick. Like, yeah. I can do a family photo shoot for my family only for in, like, 15, 20, 30 minutes maximum. And so sad. He, he wanted to, I don't know what he wanted to do. He didn't really have nowhere to go or anything. So, um he just was like, I don't want to do pictures no more. We're like, just wait one more. We're like, just sit there one more. We're not, <laughs> you ain't got nothing to do. And he's like, I don't want to take pictures no more. And you can see the other brother. He's like, man. I could just, yeah. you know, Isn't that great how photos em evoke that emotion and they take you right back to that moment? That's about photography. Yeah. And, you know, that single photo, it's like that whole story and what it took you back to that moment saw the smile crack on your face and it's just like those kind of things that's why we do what we do you know what i mean wow that's a beautiful shot i watched your cnn thing with um anthony bourdain too and that was a beautiful piece as well and what a great portrait there yeah i i, I felt like i felt pretty lucky like i got a you know i was like man because you know the show was an hour long mm -hmm. but i actually only saw him for like 15 minutes wow both I'd say the first time was a little bit longer because we drove him around. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, David Cho was the one who introduced me to him. He goes, mm -hmm. "Hey man, you want to take Anthony Anthony Bourdain low riding through East LA and downtown?" I go, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> so I got like four or five cars from our car club, and um, we took him around. You know, nice. driving around that day, and uh, that was the first time I had ever seen a drone. Yeah, they had a drone following us around. And then uh, the second time we shot was just me and Cartoon, and we took him to a taco spot down in, over here downtown. And um, he came in. We ate together. I'd say we probably hung out for like a half an hour that time. We, you know, had some tacos mm. did, you know, and uh, did the little interview, and he was out of there. But we had filmed the other parts for the show, and he wasn't there earlier on that day. Mm. But... Uh, Beautiful. You know, he was just a cool guy and sad to, you yeah. know, see, him, uh, you know, that he had to, to, you know, he, that he just got caught up in the depression and ended up his, in his life, you know? Yeah. That's, but the, you know, back in the day when we were growing up, people used to, say, used to say like, oh, you know, you're weak if you kill yourself and this and that, but to me it's like that mental illness is no joke you know mm. it's not a weakness it's a it's yeah. more of a it's called mental illness it's yeah. not called mental weakness you know it's yeah. like uh their people's brains are wired differently you know absolutely like people you know let other things you know drive their emotions a lot harder than others like you know i'm i can pretty much let a lot of shit stuff uh roll off my shoulders mm-hmm not that serious you know it's not that big of a deal but some people take things you know a lot you know further in their heart or in their head and uh you know it's it's a sad thing you know like i shot him i shot uh robin williams also wow you know he he uh took his own life and it's a it's a crazy story you know yep absolutely that's a like a lot of pain you know a lot of pain yeah, it's, it's a beautiful portrait. It definitely, you know what I mean? Just the power of the person and who he was. It's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. He was cool. That's real too. Wow. Man, just the, the, the places you got to go and the people you've you've met this, thus far in your life is just incredible. The portfolio of things. I, I do have your books, which are incredible little pieces of testament to like just your portfolio. But these, just yeah. being able to see these in this way and in this order, amazing. Yeah, that was a shoot I did at, uh, I think, Sony Studios in, in uh, Culver City. That was for Double uh, XL magazine. Nice. Yeah. Did a little feature on the, on the BC Boys. But I knew them uh, back in the day, mm. probably in the 80s and 
stuff from the clubs in the 90s, but um, this was, I, I had uh, really become knowing them a lot better was on, on a tour we did with House of Pain in 1992 mm-hmm. when I was touring with House of Pain. We were, on the, we were on their tour, we were opening up for them, and we uh-huh. had a seven set. It was like an intro and then jump around, and we'd play that every day. And then um, <laughs> we got kicked off that tour for being too rowdy, but um, it was fun. <laughs> Good time. Sick. This is a mural that uh, my friend El Mac did of me on a train. He didn't tell me anything. He just, uh, one day I just, he, <laughs> one day he said, uh, uh, a picture like in the DM. Yeah. Say, hey, Esteban, check this out. And it was uh, from somebody else's IG. And it was a, a picture that some guy had taken of this train, like in Minnesota or Minneapolis wow. or somewhere like that. He's like, you know, I caught this one of an LMAC train going by. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. I go, man, you painted that of me. He goes, yeah, brother. And I was like, Man, thank you, homie. And, and uh, I go, what an honor, you know. And and um, this kid wrote to me in L.A. one day. He's like, hey, man, I just saw your train. It's over here in Orange what? County. If you want to get pictures of it, it's been here for a couple of days. I go, man, I'm out of here. So I, I got in the car that day, took off, and went and uh, wow. took some pictures. All across the nation. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's it, people tagged it like maybe two months ago. Mm-hmm. It was somewhere back east, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, like it's got a it's a trip because it's like you know people that know graffiti and they know mm-hmm. his art because he didn't sign it or anything. So mm-hmm. it's somebody who'll mm-hmm. tag him or they'll tag me and then they'll you know put it on IG. And they're cool. in a different state. So it's a trip that people recognize and and they you know take the time to mm-hmm. you know shoot it to you isn't that crazy just social media like that like they're they're tagging you he messages you and how we all can connect through that it's just incredible yeah like he he had done that 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 painting like a couple months before that even uh before he told me about it (laughs) and he didn't tell me i found out about through uh, somebody posting it on ig you know that's so funny there's cassie (laughs) <laughs> hard to take pictures of it's hard to take bad pictures of her <laughs> that's Every beautiful off the yeah hook. yeah beautiful she's as we just she's sorry no as we just flipped through there that's a uh, cypress hill uh-huh. that was for uh an album cover called uh i think it was uh so death do us part or, or skull and bones. One of those. Wow. Wow. You shot a lot of different album covers as well as the artists and all of these different things. And, you know, watching that video, it was saying you, you started, uh, as a bouncer, then became the tour manager and kind of working your way in through and to where you are today. Um, how did you create all those relationships? Again, being a personal person, a le- well likable and getting the job done of what you needed to do. But how does someone work in their way to achieve what where they really want to be with their career or their works? Um, well, like with that job, I was, a, I was a, you know, like the first one to get up and the last one to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And then I did, uh, you know, I would do, uh, you know, as a tour manager, you're like the travel agent. You're the, um, you so you you book the flights, you book the hotels, uh-huh. you check them into the merch, you check them into the venue to where they do a um, sound check, and then you go to dinner, and then you do press, and you, you do the show, and then you have your crew break down, and you go to the next city. So I had to do a lot of stuff, but in between then, I would do photos and, uh-huh. and shoot some videos. And they were the first guys that were like, hey, man, you know, you got something cool here. You know, like, they would yeah. come to my uh, my 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 warehouse and just be tripping out on my photos all the yeah. time they'd be like hey let's see some of the photos from the last tour and i'd break them out and they're like these are like some time life you know magazine type yeah. stuff you know yeah you should do more and they were the ones who gave me the first chance to do videos and mm-hmm. gave me the first opportunities to do album covers and 
because I was a tour manager, I learned the game on the back end of, you know, I learned like budgets and what, mm -hmm. what type of money people were getting. And I learned like what, what, you know, where the money was being allocated mm -hmm. on those type of jobs on videos and on photo shoots. So I'd just be like looking at the sheets, the call mm -hmm. sheets and just, okay, this guy does that, that guy does that. And this is the budget. That's how much they all get paid. And I, and once I picked all that up, I just, you know, I had all that information and then I had the, the photography uh -huh. part. Down. So I, I just went out into the photography workforce with that, you know, it's just locked and loaded and ready to go. That's incredible. Like this guy yeah. right here, I had to rent the, I had to rent the church out, you know, give mm -hmm. them a donation. And then we, we had to get all these bones and all the skeletons in the background. And then I had a, like, I set them all up. So we had to do like sets, props and art direction. You know? wow. So it was a, a pretty detailed, uh, you know, job, but you were getting good budgets to uh, where you could afford to get all that stuff and do all that kind of work, you know, absolutely. Where else could you 30 skeletons <laughs> put them in a church, you know, Holy buy God. a bunch of flowers. And, and, and you know, it comes back to that vision. <laughs> you had the vision for what you wanted on the shot. You knew that you needed this many, the skeletons and how you wanted and what you wanted it to look like. But it's also, you didn't have any formal schooling on this. You know, it's coming from your just attention to detail and your wanting to do more and your passion for photography and the creating for even the art directing. You know what I mean? Because some people study all those types of things and you just became that natural of doing this and being able to navigate work with these guys and create your visions. That's incredible. Yeah, it was a, those were, uh, there were a lot of stress, those type of jobs, but mm -hmm. the budgets were big and mm -hmm. like I had a, I'd have a couple of helpers with me that day. So, yeah. you know, it kind of like helped the day flow, but you never have enough time to do these type, to do these type of jobs. You're always like, man, I wish I could have got, mm -hmm. you know, just a couple more things in or Of course. Yeah. But, you know, oh. you always got to get that going. Yeah. I'm here. Flow. Yeah absolutely that's a sick shot yeah this day uh you know sorry to say canon but both of my cannons <laughs> had uh it was a cold day and we were in culver city and uh it was like free like almost freezing but not you know there wasn't no snow or rain but it was just a really cold day and i had had i had a canon e1 and a mm -hmm. pentex six seven and both of my, I, and I went to Sammy's camera and I bought another Canon A1 just for a backup. And when I went to fire them off, both the Canons, they wouldn't fire off. And I was like, man, because I think it was too cold for them. They, for some reason, I, it was too cold and they wouldn't fire off. And then I picked up the Pentax and <laughs> had a 110 film in there, which is 10 frames per roll, for Jeez. those that don't know. So with this was a job for a righteous kill movie poster it was a spec job meaning i went to shoot it but i wasn't going to get paid unless they liked it and then mm -hmm. i would get paid but they had already paid somebody to do the actual movie poster so i went through a lot of drama to get this to this day but um i finally got to shoot them it lasted four minutes and uh i shot 15 frames which was one and a half rolls jeez 15 clicks and I ended up getting the job, you know, then the movie company ended up liking the shoot and yeah. used it as the full blown campaign. Wow. The DVD Blu-ray cover. So oh man. We got a uh, pretty lucky on that one. Yeah. Well, it comes with pre being prepared and knowing what you want to kind of achieve huh? and then working that time. We always want more time. That's the thing when we're shooting, right. you know, yeah, like I like I said before, you know, I, I went there and, there, you know, I'd never been there before. They're yeah. like, hey, just come to the movie studio in Culver City <laughs> and find a place to shoot. And I was like, man, everything looked, you know, didn't look cool. So yeah. I found this one roll-up door and, I, and right when they're like, hey, where's that camera guy at? You know, the one they wanted to shoot, Bobby and Al. I, I was like, I'm right here. And they're like, okay, here they come. And, these two doors flew open and then they were in the front. There's like 20, maybe 20 to 30 people behind them. Like the publicists, the yeah. makeup, director, producers, everybody's behind them. And I was like, 
they're like, what do you want to do? I was like, oh, you know, just have them stand right here by this uh, roll-up door. Mm -hmm. The light was even because, you know, there was no sun out. It was a gloomy day. And, I sh you know, like I said, I shot those 15 frames. And they were like, okay, thank you. Bobby <laughs> Al, let's do it. Went to the next set, and I, I was done. I was like, man, like I wish I could have shot two full rolls on yeah. the show at least. Yeah, at least. But, but this is beautiful. You don't, get, you don't get that time, and you got to, yeah. you know, run with it. Yeah. Yeah, that, that light, how even it is just naturally, is just so gorgeous, huh? It just really kind of makes it pop on that real clean. Yeah, I was, I was happy with it. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Between Sets. Make sure to like and subscribe to be tuned in on all future episodes. Thank you.